Hi, I'm Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint. And today, I'm actually updating you. This is now day 60 since we've installed these tomato plants that are in front of me. There's one that actually was installed about 90 days, which is this one over here. So you can see within um, the extra four to five weeks that this one had actually made a big difference. Um, I wanna basically give you a tour to see what we've planted, where we're at with them, and what we're gonna do to actually give them another boost. I've been fertilizing these plants every 30 days with different organic fertilizers to help feed the soil organisms, organisms which are in turn feeding the plants. So in this video, I also wanna talk about getting your plant's genetic potential with the fruit size, quality, and flavor. And this here is a tomato I actually picked up from a neighbor um, who's growing these heirloom varieties that actually bear very large beefsteak um, variety tomatoes. If you're looking to get tomatoes this big, then you've got to start off with tomatoes that have genetics that allow the fruit to get this big. Um, the tomatoes that are in our garden are between medium um, to small. I've got one of the large varieties, but not quite this large. I've got a better boy, which I'll show you towards the end. Um, and then we're also going to be adding some cherry um, varieties. This one here is your, um, your you know, Roma tomato. And then I've got a cherry. So you can see the variety of tomatoes, sizes, shapes, quality. Um, so they're all different and they're all different because their genetics are different. So if you're planting a tomato and you're like, why are they not big enough? It, you could be doing everything right and you're never going to get a large tomato because you didn't start off with genetics that allow you to produce tomatoes like this. But let me give you another tour of the tomatoes that I've actually introduced into our garden this year. So the first tomato I plant I've got over here is called the San Marzano. And if you take a look at that, if you want to zoom in so you can actually read that. And then let me show you the fruits that are actually here in the plant. You can actually see them. They're an oval-shaped um, tomato variety. If you come up over here, you can actually see some younger ones. And this here will be growing um, all the way up. And one of the things I'm going to be doing in the garden is I've got to continuously remove any new um, shoots that are coming off of the plant. So even this here has actually a tomato. I'm actually going to remove it. I've been growing this particular um, tomato variety as a double stem. So it's only supposed to have two stems. Anything that's extra, such as this here, and take a look, I'm coming down the, the plant trunk, and then there's a shoot that's coming off to the side, right at the base of the leaf. I'm leaving the lower leaf on, and just removing this offshoot out. And then this here is actually all fruiting. This is not a stem, but here's another shoot that's going up. So this here will be removed and the other stem that's come offshoot that's coming off to the side will also be removed. So we're repeating that process and what we're gonna do over here now is this particular plant, and here's the variety, is a Heinz Super Roma tomato. If we take a look towards the base, you can actually see these are the first group of um, fruits and some more and some more. But now the plant's actually toppling over. It's starting to grow off to the side. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna show you how we're actually gonna support it so it can actually grow up this vertical garden. So we're just gonna take a piece of twine here. Whenever you actually tie your knot, you always tie it to the supporting structure and not onto your plant so you don't constrict the flow of juices and sugars in the plant. So we're just gonna tie a knot here and then we're basically gonna support the plant and pull it up like so. And that's gonna encourage the plant to grow vertically in our vertical garden. All of the excess strain can then be removed. And there we go. So now the plant will continue to grow to the next level. So that's that variety. This here is another one of the same ones, the Super Roma tomatoes. You can see those um, tomatoes over here, um, some more in the back. And this one here I just supported. And this here is gonna follow this supporting stake. And I'm growing this one as a single stem. So this one here is a single stem. The one next to it is a single stem as well. And then the San Marzano is a double stem, two stem tomato. Now over here, this is actually my tomato I wanted to show off in this video. So here we are. This one um, is the early grow variety. I've actually harvested the first group of tomatoes down here. These will be coming off today. Let me actually get my pruners. So you can see how it's grown all the way up. And what's gonna ultimately happen is we're gonna add a couple more bamboo supports to each of the two supporting poles. 
and then we're gonna grow the roof of what we call our tomato cave. So ultimately we'll be picking tomatoes off the ceiling of this plant. So here today, we're actually harvesting the last two remaining um, early girls on this particular stem. You can see we already picked one here, one here, one there, one there. These are the last two and now we're gonna remove the entire stem all the way to the trunk of the tree so that you don't have all of this dead plant hanging off on the plant which would be an entryway for more disease and insects to get into the plant. So we're gonna take this into the home and enjoy either fresh bruschetta, fresh salads, fresh sauces, so many good things and the best part about this all is we're growing these all organically, we're putting a lot of nutrients and all of those great nutrients that are going in the soil are now in our tomatoes. So this is superior to anything you can pick up in the market, even from a whole foods market. Homegrown tomatoes is the best thing for your, your body's health. And what I also want to point out is take a look at the quantity of fruit that we've got out of here. You can see that in just this area alone we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we got nine here in this cluster. We've got another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I counted earlier today that we've got about 45 tomatoes that we're expecting so far on the stem and it's not even done. We're still in the month of June and we've got many more months of fruitful production to, to get just off of this stem. And this early girl variety I've actually grown as a two stem. You can see there's one stem that's going up, which is leading to these tomatoes. And then the second stem, which is coming out of the soil over here, Second stem comes up, and you can see the tomatoes that are back here. And here's like another group of at least 10 more tomatoes. So we're gonna be harvesting all of those today, and I'll be on top of it every couple of days and taking in the fresh tomatoes for my family to enjoy. Let's come on down and take a look at the next variety that we have here. So the next one we have here is called the Big Boy. And this is my one and only beefsteak variety that I've got here in the garden. And I'm not a big fan of large tomatoes because the plant usually supports fewer large tomatoes so if there's any damage by insects or pests or disease to that one tomato it's just a percentage of, I'm going to be losing a larger percentage of fruit per plant so um, I'm not a large a big fan of growing the beefsteak varieties for that one reason I'd rather be growing medium to small varieties and having just a lot more quantity to keep on bringing into the house every day or every few days and if we come a little further I've got another early grow variety it is one of my favorite tomatoes that's growing over here and then the one thing that we're missing, and there's a couple more things I want to share in this video. There's one more thing that I'm missing in this garden, and I've grown it every year, and this is the first time I'm actually growing in the month of June. If you haven't already planted your tomatoes, I have to advise, stop, and do not plant any more tomatoes. The best time for planting tomatoes is at the end of the risk of frost in your area. For us here in Los Angeles, that's usually the second to third week of January. Um, I like planting usually the first week of February and that gives me a huge head start for having the largest growing and harvesting season possible. But now being June, these plants are going to more likely than not be dead by the end of the year. And I'm going to show you the life cycle of these tomatoes and, and, and what they're going to endure. Um, so you can see the disease, how it's going to ultimately plague even these beautiful plants. They're, they're, their life is going to come to the end this year. Um, and we're going to be removing them after we after we get that last harvest But I wanted to introduce a cherry tomato into my garden. I love cherry tomatoes. They're awesome for salads They're awesome for bruschetta. Take a look here at the, the fruits You can see how they're small. This is called the sweet 100 variety. Let me show you the label here and What's so great about these is they usually produce literally almost a hundred tomatoes per level um, and you'll get to watch this grow over over the season as well. But what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna plant this real quick so you can see um, the steps actually getting this in the ground. So I'm gonna basically, I've got here um, a bin of compost. I'm gonna put all my surplus soil actually in here real quick. I basically wanna dig a hole that's about six inches deeper. The goal is to keep hopefully only the upper leaves showing. So what we're gonna do here is so we've opened up the hole here. If you wanna take a look in here. This is gonna be the hole. We're now gonna get some compost from the bottom of this bin. We got some compost. What the compost is gonna do is it's gonna feed the soil organisms. We're now gonna also add um, a product such as this. It's another uh, organic plant food. It's got over here, as you can see by the numbers, 5% nitrogen, 3% phosphorus, 3% potassium and what this does is again it feeds the soil organisms enriches the soil 
and we'll continuously feed the plant over the next few months. And this here is a product made by Espoma, organic, plant tone. Um, it's a well-balanced fertilizer to basically um, give some added nutrients to the soil. So we're gonna put that in there. We're gonna mix it up with the native soil. And you can see that I've got very little room here, so the chances are I'm only gonna be growing a single stem of this that'll then follow up the pole and fill in this, this area um, within the garden. So now that we've prepared the hole, we're gonna to need to get the plant in the ground. Um, as you can see, I've, I've, I'm basically going as deep as I can to hopefully get just the top few leaves above the ground. So I'm actually gonna end up removing all of these side branches, all of these side shoots, Even though it's got fruit and flower, let's see if, yeah, the fruit and flower are gonna come off as well, so that's off. This leaf is gonna go off as well. I'm gonna try to bury this root plus as much of this stem under the ground. By doing so, it's actually gonna encourage the plant to actually root all of the area that's actually under the ground, and that'll actually create a larger root system which will support more fruit. As you can see, it's working for the rest of the tomato, so we're gonna do the same thing here. Here we are. And take a look, the plants actually become pot bound. As you can see, the roots have all coiled. It's very important to actually remove those roots that have actually coiled or try to loosen and open them. I'm actually just ripping those off and that'll actually encourage the plant to actually grow um, a lot more broad and a lot more wide for a better root system. But you wanna basically tell those roots you're no longer pot bound and it's time for them to grow in the soil. So we're gonna go now as deep as we can. We're gonna put that here in the soil and then we're gonna backfill. So here we go with that. The last thing I'm gonna do here is I've got this Ivy Organics and it's basically used um, as a tree guard paint. I'm gonna show you actually um, very quickly over here if you can just come around the corner. You can actually see this is my Fuerte avocado tree. And if you take a look at the lower stems down here, you can actually see the whole trees covered with the Ivy Organics. And what it does is actually protects against sunburn, sun scald, insects, and rodents. Um, and the higher branches, I mean, those are all new growth. I'll show you another tree in just a minute. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna apply this Ivory Organics 3-in-1 tree guard paint. And it basically is a natural tree trunk and branch barrier protection against damaging sunburn and insects and rodents. And the reason we're applying this is to basically keep this plant, even though it looks like it's in the shade right now at this time of day, but we've had a 90 degree day today. This is gonna help keep the plant cool. It also has other oils in it to help keep the insects off of it so they don't chew on the leaves and to give this plant the best start. And here I've just got a, a, a bottle of water I'm gonna be adding one or two teaspoons to that. And I'm just gonna shake it here and then just apply it to the leaves. And I only do it at the beginning. This actually helps keep the plant cool. If you actually zoom in a little bit, you can actually see the white paint that's on there. Um, it's again an organic paint with organic oils and this will help keep um, the plant protected as the roots get established and the plant gets off to a, a great start. Now we're, next thing I want to show you is actually how to um, fertilize your plants. I've actually got um, compost tea that I want to show you that I'm going to be doing. I do fertilize my plants every 30 days. If you've been watching my 30 day video, my 60 day video, um, you'll see all the different things that I've done. And then also my zero day video, which is when I put the plants in the ground, you'll see all the different things I've done. But I want to show you my compost tea if you want to come and follow me around the corner. So here we are next to our compost tea. I've been working on this for the last, um, it's been about 48 hours now. And what this is, is it's basically got water, a lot of water, and then it's got a few handfuls of compost, which we've actually made here in the garden. I'm actually gonna do a specific video which talks about how to make organic tea to help enrich the, um, the soil, to help feed the soil organisms. Um, and this here is an easy way to actually get a lot of vitamins and a lot of nutrients into your soil they otherwise couldn't get with any of the store-bought materials. So if you take a look in here, you can actually see all the foam at the top. I'm gonna to wanna to stir this down I've got actually a bubbler that's on the side which is actually adding oxygen in here to keep it, um, it's something called aerobic respiration. We want the beneficial bacteria, the beneficial fungi, the, all of the living organisms in here to actually be those that actually thrive on oxygen and not something that actually will rot and decompose. 
Um, so these are all, again, living bacteria, living fungus, living uh, microorganisms that are then going to go into with a lot of nutrients and minerals that will then go into, um, let me actually put that back in there. So that's, that's the bubble, you can see it's actually bubbling. It was actually shown better before, but you can see all the bubbles that are actually coming from the bubbler that I've put in. But I'm gonna do a whole video in the next week or two, so please be sure to subscribe so you can see how, how I actually prepare the compost tea that you can use in your garden. And then I'm just gonna take a water bottle. If you actually put this in your um, watering can, there's too many things in this, um, in this compost tea that can actually block your, um, the sprayer end. So what I'm doing is just taking um, one of our juice bottles here, and filling it up with the compost tea material. And what your compost tea has, the periodic table is, I believe, about 118 um, elements. You probably got half of the periodic table in this jug. So what we're gonna do is now add this compost tea solution per tomato plant. So. This one here is too bushy and I wanna make this clear for your video. So if you come over here next to my early grow variety, I just wanna show you what I'm gonna be doing here. So I'm taking the compost tea and I'm just gonna put it right around the root base, all the way around. And now I've got pretty much all the food it's gonna need for the next 30 days. So I hope you found this video informative. If so, be sure to like it and most importantly, subscribe down below so you can actually see how we're gonna prepare in the next upcoming week, we're gonna do a video on how to make compost here. We're gonna do another video on how to make compost um, and the importance of compost for your garden. Anyways, again, thanks for watching and happy gardening.